This session. conference will now be recorded. Very good. So let's connect here to the same text file which we connected yesterday. So where is my data source? Okay, so this is not your data source. Hang on. Let me just change thing here. Yes, madam, please go ahead. Sir, this data source folder is part of um, Tableau repository. Yes, yes, it is. These files will be dot hyper. These files will be created. Exactly. So that files will be created as part of the extract connection. So when we apply extract connection, then the data will be stored in, in that extract file. And the extract file extension is dot hyper in the latest versions of Tableau. And in the old versions, it will be dot TDE. So if you have Tableau 8.0, then you will see that the extension will come as dot TDE. So these are the extensions coming from Tableau. So answer is yes. So why it's still not taking this? Let's... So any other Tableau open here? Okay, so if it is resisting here, then we will take this file and let's go to tab to repository and then let's place that file. Okay, there are many things here, but still not a problem. Just paste that file here. Oh, if you already have that. Don't worry about this. I'm just creating a folder and then doing that. 8.30 a.m. And place this file. So let's connect this file from Tableau Desktop. Let's open it again very quickly. And before it opens, so just a, a flow. How does this work when you use extract the connection? Because the flow is also very important for you. So when we use extract connection from Tableau, so I'm just putting the same thing here, which we saw yesterday. This is my database or data source. And when you are using extract connection, then what happens? So it takes a snapshot of the data and then this snapshot is sent to Tableau data engine and this engine converts this snapshot into into the extract files so that extract files will be of this extension so the latest version is dot hyper which is um, so above W 10.0, so about 10 versions. So you will see only hyper, but below 10 versions, so the extensions will be dot TDE. So below W 10.0 versions. Okay, this was the flow which we saw yesterday. And so this is the complete cycle. So what happens here? This was where we stopped yesterday, isn't it? Okay, so let's see the same thing now. Let's connect it to the Tableau desktop for the text file. And where is that folder? So that folder is now here. And I'm changing here the, so click on extract. So remember, when you are doing extract, so you will get this option here, edit. So what is what is the purpose of this button here is, do you want to retrieve full data from the database 
or do you want to retrieve only some data from the database so which you can control it from this option but we will see this option a little little later but only understand the flow for now so when we say extract now keep this uh, read this line here will include all data because we did not restrict anything here okay now if i click on sheet one now you can see immediately so it is asking where do you want me to save the file that means the data from the notepad is now converted into into this file format into which format here a dot hyper okay i want to save this file in this same location which is of sample dot hyper file let's say save so when i clicked on save so this complete cycle is executed see how fast it is so it loaded the database it loaded the data sent it to it it saved it to this file and it is connecting to this file it all happened in a fraction of seconds all right maybe you can say sir that is a notepad only three records so it will be very fast okay we can try this for even the database as well and observe here there are a few things which we will discuss now the first point which i want to talk here is if there is a change in the data let's say if there is a change in this file okay so how many records we have so maybe five records we have and how many records we have here click on this icon and we see that there are five records very nice now there is a change in the data because data keeps changing maybe frequently or or maybe once in a while it is changing now i got a new product here all right so i'm saving the data here okay now how do i see the updated data here so what is there let's click on the table and we don't see the <clears throat> updated one what did we do for live connection to see the updated data we right clicked on the data source and we clicked on refresh button okay let's do the same thing here wait for a second and and let's click on that i'm still seeing only five records but here i have sixth record as well okay so why it did not why it did not show the updated value which it worked for live isn't it very very important point for interview as well as for tableau developer so how to get updated data if we are using extract connection is right click on the data source so this is a data source which we are talking about right click on this and use here so go to this place extract extract and here you are seeing the option refresh so if we use this option we are not getting the data if we use this option refresh okay you are getting some message on the screen can you please read it very quickly maybe the first line is enough the entire contents will be replaced so why it is giving me the warning message i'm just asking give me the data so why it is giving me the warning message why because why because here go to the go to the snapshot here again so why the why the error message means if you want to get the updated data then the same cycle has to be executed once again that means if there is a change in data so again you have to connect to data source which is already there so now tableau has to again take the snapshot again it has to send it to engine and engine has to convert the data into this file and now it has to save the data 
but here we already have the file isn't it so we already have sample dot hyper file so now we need to create another file now it doesn't create another file so what it is going to do it will delete the contents of this hyper file because you already have data so some new data is coming so the data existed in this file will be deleted and then when you do the extract refresh the fresh data is coming now and it will be saved in this file so that is a warning here so i will delete complete data from the extract file because you are about to get a fresh data and the existing data will be deleted so do you want to still do that yes please do that because i need updated data so i clicked on yes so that means that now when i click on yes here so delete cycle is executed now will i get the updated record yes i am getting the updated record but think of this scenario here all right so think of this scenario i have one lakh records okay i have like one lakh records and there is the new record which is added to the database and it's only one record this is only one new record now if i say extract refresh because i want to get the newly added record also now for one record it has to delete to one lakh records from the file so this one lakh records will already be there in this file for one record it has to delete entire thing and then it has to add one lakh one lakh one records into this file system does it make any sense for one record deleting deleting 1 lakh records and again getting all 1 lakh one records definitely doesn't make sense do we have any other option here yes we we have another option here now observe extract refresh extract refresh can be done in two ways here so what are the two ways one is full refresh and the other one is incremental refresh so the database persons will know this incremental options very clearly so what is full means clear everything how many records you have i really don't care delete all the records and i will place complete set once again second one now i will give you just a change how many records i have the newly added ones so i will just give you only those you can add that to your existing file which one is easy here second one is very easy because the performance doesn't get affected isn't it so extract can be done in two ways full extract or the incremental extract so we are only talking about the full extract now Right. but when we talk about um, the database concepts and we will definitely discuss the full refresh and incremental refresh so how do we do this so i'll take these concepts at the tableau server level because we do this from the tableau server All right but for now what is important for us is if you want to get the updated data then then you have to right click on this data source and click on extract you have to click on refresh but if it is a live connection then you just have to click on refresh that is fine sir now what is this refresh doing so if i do this nothing happens then what is this doing here so this is just a connection so do you have connection to the file or not that is going to verify that but it is not going to get you the details but if you want to get updated data then you have to go to extract and you have to do this refresh here okay 
right first point and then now here do you have updated data six records yes and here i'm just using one button here we did not discuss anything about the screen we will just discuss one by one okay so click on this yes i am seeing the updated data now there is a, some small modification here i said here instead of 100 i just made 200 save there is no newly added record please remember this there is no newly added record there is a small update to the existing data very nice now did you save that file yes and how to get the updated data now can i just say refresh now observe here is that reflecting no this should be this should be 200 which one the profits now profits are here okay but now if i do how to get the updated one right click extract refresh click on that again it is asking hey do you want to delete complete data yes i want to do that otherwise how do i get i said yes do it again this cycle will be executed okay and now let's look at the data are you getting the updated one yes so that means if you are using the extract connection for any modifications any newly added records if you want to be up to date then we have to perform this action here okay that's one thing which we have to remember now i have some questions here so what is that here is can you list out the differences between live and extract this is a this is a mandatory interview question all right so extensions we will put that later so this is the interview questions which we are discussing so the question here is what are what are the differences between between live and extract connections so what are the differences so please list them out okay so can we list them out here live and extract So can you help me with few differences here? Whatever you understood, you can put it in the chat window. So the very first point, yes, it is right. So the first point is we have connection to, we have connection to the data source. data source 24 by 7 so that means there is a continuous connectivity with the data source so with this reason with this reason we can work in online mode but if we lose the connectivity can you work in online mode if you have a live connection can you work if you lose the data if you lose the connectivity no we cannot work so that means that means here we can work only in online mode and and if we lose connectivity if we lose connectivity we cannot work what about the extract connection so we can connect to the data source using offline mode also why offline mode because you are trying to get the data from the database into the file system now where is the file located that file is in my local system so i can work with the database or the data even though i lose the connectivity very 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 important point 
and now the link between the points here because i have the file in my local machine are you saving the data in your local machine yes of course so the data is is available is available in local machine yes because you are using the file system the data is now stored in your local machine but what about live data is not stored is not stored in the local machines we are directly connecting to the database and we are pulling the data from the database and we are working and once we close tab view there is no data saved on your local machine but that is not the case in extract even though you close the data the connection to the data the file is still in your local machine all right so that's the very big difference and any other differences which i can talk about yeah that's that's right what you said now the other difference here can i have any inputs in the chat window how are you refreshing the data and how are you getting the latest data so we have to use we have to use what is the steps here extract refresh to get the data and when we use here in the live so we have to use we have to use just refresh the data option so how do you do that right click on the data data source so I'm not putting that here, understanding that it is fine. And yeah, so the very important point, which you just put that here, which one has the performance, uh, good performance here, the live or the extract? Mm, so which one has a good performance? Majority of them say it is, it is the live connection no the performance is not very good in live connection oh is that so so why is that because because observe here so I'll, I'll put the point here performance is is little slow compared to extract so it is not too much slow if it takes uh, uh, 10 seconds in extract it takes like eight seconds in live sorry it takes a 12 seconds in live a very minute difference and i'll just put that point here but why is that performance is better than live the reason is the reason is that the very where your data is located in a different location different place so that means if you want to get the data if we want to talk to your data source, I'm dependent on the internet speed. I'm dependent on the, the performance of the database. It is dependent on the network speed. It is dependent on the hardware infrastructure, isn't it? Hardware systems, I'll just put that point. So your internet speed should be good, the data transfers should be good, and the database performance should be good because you are retrieving the data from the database, and the transfer rates should be good, and, and the devices which you are using, the network devices should be good because the data is transferring between two different systems from two different locations. So it is dependent on all of these but here during the extract why it is better than live because because the data is now stored in our local machine because it is stored in our local machine local machine resources are only used isn't it so i really don't need internet also i don't need anything about the db because the file is in my local machine very nice so this is another point which we can say in the interview all right so any other any other points 
I'm looking at the chat window. So do you see any other points? Think about it. Where we can list out the differences between the live and the extract. So, uh, Mr. Nimas here. So, there will be a difference in the extensions as well, right? So, in extract mode, we'll have mm -hmm. an option of dot uh, TDA or dot hyper, wherein right. in live uh, we don't have that option, right? Correct. Correct. So, here the data is uh, stored. So, maybe I will put that here itself. So, in which format here? Yeah, it is either TDE or dot hyper. But here, so there's no file systems used. And the, yes, whatever you said is absolutely right. And now, yes, even the point which is uh, put on the chat window, that is also right. The, another point here is when we should use live and when we should use extract. Hmm. So when we should use live data is when data is changing dynamically, that means every minute, every second, the data is changing, then, then only use the live connection. That means if you are working on the OLTP systems, if you are connecting to OLTP systems, so don't take the extracts because you are displaying the data a little slow to your customers. So which is not recommended. But when data is not changing so fast or not at all changing, then you can happily use the extract connections. So when data is changing dynamically, use live connection. So we need to know like when we should use which type of connection, right? So when data is not changing or, or just we'll put here frequently, then then prefer extract connections. Okay, so these are some differences which we can tell to the interviewer. And this is one very, 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 very commonly asked question. Maybe this is the first or second question which you will get. <laughs> All right, so some information about the live versus the extract connections in Tableau. But we'll still come back to this because we are only about extracting all data, which we really don't do that. So we will see how to extract the partial data only by required data. Yes, we will see that very soon. Right, so now let's move to the next different uh, small topic here. So what is that topic is, when I'm dragging the table here and I'm getting the data, this is nice. But if you observe a few things here, it is trying to display something here, ABC, some hash symbol, another hash symbol, isn't it? This is very small notepad. So let's connect it to the default files which are given by Tableau. So where are that files located? So let's go back and let's connect it to Excel file now. So I'm connecting to Excel file. And the default files will be stored in the data sources folder. Go to the folder and I want to open one spreadsheet here. All right, let's go select it and open. open because I want to see more data so let's put that here and and now observe I'm getting different different symbols here one is hash one is ABC one is a calendar and what else I can show you for now okay that's good something is a globe symbol so what are these now 
so the next topic here is what are the data types in tableau all right so another frequently asked question and let's put that here it is a number so i really don't focus on the numbers just put the question so the next thing is what are the different data types in tableau so every application will have to deal with the data but we need to know what is that type of data so generally the type of data can be numbers isn't it so it can be the fractions or so let's put it this way the decimals and it can be the text and it can be the the dates and even you can have a date and times as well and what else you can have the different data types here and even we can have the booleans so i'm just listing out the different uh, um, data types which we can have so numbers means integers just the numbers like this without any decimals but if you also have the decimals so generally what do we call in other languages this was like integer this was like floating values let's say if i have 3.140 or some decimal points here isn't it? so we call them as the floating points text yeah it can be one character it can be a group of characters like this and date yes we will have the date fields our birth dates our admission dates our discharge dates delete dates order dates so many date fields here so which contains here three parts which is a year month and day there are many things here but i'll just consider three date and time yeah definitely time is also very important uh, along with the date so what time you invested in in the share market so at that particular time what is the amount so correctly that amount will be deducted and boolean values it is a true or false so these are the general ones but what are the data types available in tableau very nice how do i see that where do i see that so these are the data types so click on this click on this here you will see the data types coming up here these are the only data types available in tableau so number it is divided into two parts here one is a whole number another one is a decimals so that means that when you connect to the data automatically tableau can understand what is that type of data you have in that column so in this column i am only having the integers just the numbers so it it categorized as number and whole numbers there is no decimal points and observe the other ones date and time date string so string is nothing but one character or group of characters so everything is ca categorized into string but the other programming languages or any other technologies we say that as a char and we have another one as a string but tableau says everything i'll treat it as just the strings the string is a collection of one character or a group of characters boolean true or false all right so these are the data types available in tableau okay so let's list it out now so what are the different data types available in tableau so it is a number so this contains both of them so which is a whole and which is the decimal decimal this is one data type and after number let's put the string which is the um, group of characters and after string we have date and date and time and we have boolean values all right so did we miss anything now one two three four and 
five and six, but we can combine it to one. All right, let's see for the other one here. Order ID, this is a column which is having A, B, C. So that means now I just want to put this here. So what are the symbols we are trying to show? So what Tableau shows here is hash. Hash represent, it can be whole number, it can be a decimal number. Is that so? Let's move on to this column, which is a sales column. So you can see here the sales column. The sales column here, you have the decimal values. Eight point, point, point. And even if you have point, the symbol is hash, but it automatically chooses here the decimals. All right. So the symbol for this is the hash. All right. But if your data is in a textual format, so this is a text, 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 then it shows in ABC. So string, so it shows in ABC. So which is ABC. And how does date displays here? So date displays here with a calendar icon. So this is a calendar icon here. So if you see this column, which is a date column, it shows with the calendar icon. But if I have a date and time, then how does it show? So then it shows here, it shows here calendar plus the clock icon. So it shows the clock icon as well. Can you show that here? Because it doesn't contain, yes. So if I click on this, and can I change to another data type? Yeah, what happens? Let's click on that. Now I'm trying to convert the data, which is in the date format to date and time format. There's no time, so it shows all zeros, but observe the icon. So it is a calendar plus a clock symbol. So this is the icon for date and time, All right? Very nice. And what is the next one? Boolean. So Boolean will be displayed with this symbol, true or false. So it shows in this format. Okay, so I'll just try to convert this into Boolean. Okay, what happens? You will get the null values because I cannot convert date into Boolean. So Boolean is something like a validation like do you have this or not true or false all right so i'm only focusing on the symbol here all right so it displays in this format which is true or false this is what it shows apart from these we'll try to see few more symbols when we when we see working um, with the different uh, logics here all right so now if I change to true or false, the data is lost. Now if I change it back to date, will I still get the data? Yes, the data is still there and it is not reflecting back to the original file. We are just modifying that in, in Tableau. Okay, that means the data is safe. Even though we change something, the data is still safe. Fine. And if we scroll, what is this here the globe symbol which we did not list out here isn't it so we did not list out the globe format here this is called as the geographical format so what is a globe here so the globe represents so this is a geographical format and which is represented using the globe icon so what is the meaning of that? So what usage we have? How do we make use of this? We will talk about that. But if I click on this, observe here, it still shows a string because the content is a textual format only. But in addition to the text format, this field, country or region, can also act like a geographical format. So that means we can do something on the map. 
So what is the usage of this is when you find this geographical format, we can we can work on the maps as well. That is the meaning of that. So maps means definitely it should have latitudes and longitudes. We'll talk about that. That means can I also call geographical format into data types? So where is that available here? So is that available in this list? It is not, but if you scroll down, you will see geographical role. So that means this is not exactly the data type, but you can assign the existing existing data types to additional one that means it can work in addition to the string data type i can also show you in terms of the geographical format so what is that it is showing a big list here right so we'll see what is this and how we can use them but generally when they ask you what are the data types so say these number string date date and time boolean and apart from these we can we can also have the geographical formats for the string data types all right so we would definitely not include it in the data type this is just the additional to the existing one all right so we cannot really say that is a a data type but when telling the answer for this question so please also include so we also have a geographical format or you can also say it as a role where we can work with a few keywords in tableau so what are those keywords how do we use them we will discuss them in geographical analysis class okay now i know something about the data type what is the next thing it is showing here orders so everywhere it is displaying orders 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 because what it is telling is this is the table name from where you are getting this column it is very clear i dragged this orders and i placed it here and why it should still show again that this column is from orders this column is from orders every column is coming from orders only but why you want to specifically display orders here why because when we have or when we work with more than one table when we work with more than one table then let's say i have like only 10 columns but i am using the five to six tables five to six tables i can combine different tables then user will get confused from which table is this column coming then this will help you out so from where it is coming so looking at that okay so this is coming from table one table two so that is where it is used but for now it just displays only one table name but in future when we work with multiple tables then we will see the different table name here okay and this sorting order is, is a, a very simple one which shows the the ascending order here and the sorting order will be there for every column you can sort ascending or descending and you can just work with that and so we saw this number of rows how many it is displaying so it just shows thousand but if you want to increase that so type a very big number and you can definitely see that and so this is the default sort order which you want to have if you are working with only one table or one database we really don't see any difference here because whatever the the sorting it had so it shows the same thing in this list this is just for display purpose and we we really don't use uh, this screen a lot because because we will be working on the individual sheets and this is only for our display purpose which column shows first which column shows second so you can just change this order 
and you can see that list here. So Z to A means uh, now the alphabetical order, it starts from the Z and it starts displaying and it shows A at the beginning. If you have A, it shows A at the beginning. Right? This is just the default sort of order A to Z object A. So it's not of uh, much, uh, much uh, importance here with these things. Okay, so what we know till now, type of connection, the data, the columns, the data types. Okay, and we did not discuss about these filters and we have to talk about more the extract and we'll see more when we go on, All right? So let's move on to the other one and, and we'll see from where we will get started. Now I'm going to sheet one, but I'll again come back to the screen when the topic comes up. Now let's click on sheet one. So there are things to discuss here. This checkbox, where do we use, why do we use? We'll come to that. So even this new union, when the topic comes up, we will definitely discuss that. All right, let's click on sheet one. Now observe these things here. What it shows, you have two tabs here. One is a data and another one is analytics tab. The default is the data tab, which shows the, the connections which you are working on. Now, if you observe the symbols, the first one is the live connection. The second is an extract connection. So that means that can I have more than one data source at the same point of time? Yes, definitely you can connect it to more than one database at the same point of time. So you can definitely work with the, the different databases as well. So maybe SQL, maybe Excel files, different file systems. Yes, you can connect it. All right, now we we'll just talk about a few things here. The default tab is the data, which shows the data sources here. And, and if you come to this section, now you see a thin line which is getting separated here, isn't it? You have some things here, you have some things here. What are all these, why it is separated? All right, we'll talk about that. And, and observe a few things here as well. So we'll come to that point why it is separating and on what basis. Observe the different parts of Tableau now. One, two, three, four. These four, we call it as shelves. It is very similar to what we have in our house. My um, uh, books shelf my clothes shelf. So we have a, a big uh, storage uh, in our homes, which we call it as uh, the shelves, where we store the, the items. It can be the books, it can be the clothes, it can be money, whatever it is. So in Tableau, these four things, we call it as shelves. Remember that this is again the interview question. How many shelves you have in Tableau? It is four pages shelf, filters shelf, columns and rows. These four are called as shelves. And just a quick note, we use these three for one purpose and we use this for another purpose. Why is pages shelf used? It is used for animation purpose. So just remember a point, but we will see one class it takes for uh, discussing pages shelf. So this is used for animation purpose. Okay. And these remaining three shelves we use to display data here. Now, just a quick note. And we have four shelves. And this is our active area. So this is where we build our reports. So this is where we build our reports. And, and this is a title of the sheet and we can 
drag and the drop so tableau is all about drag and drop so you can drag these fields or these fields you can drop it here you can drop it here you can drop it here right we will see them so what happens if i do that but what is the point here is so this is my active working area and this is my shelves all right what about this here so this we call it as the the marks card the name is a little different here so it is called as the marks card c a r d all right so we call this particular one as a marks card and this this window generally we call it as the legend of tableau because everything you can do from this small window which is a very simple one but we'll see that as we move on and this marks card has a different items here so when you click on this drop down so these are some of the default charts which we can prepare the bar chart line charts area charts and these are the symbols symbol charts square circle and the shapes which is commonly used most frequently used text map pie chart cant bar so you have so many options coming up here so this is a drop down where we can show the type of chart to the end user fine and we have got some buttons here so you can change the colors size text hmm, interesting this one and details and the tool tips all right so keep an eye on this so you have got a few items in this marks card which we use most of the times in this five shelves only so most of the time we will be working on one two three and this part right and whatever we do the result will be displayed in this sheet all right so this is the only screen available in tableau where we spend most of our time on this so which is very easy for anyone to just understand the tableau what is it about so the other uh, bi tools whatever it can be power bi or any other tools you will have so many options the drill down options the selections the impact will be shown in different ways but in tableau this is the only screen which we work for most of the time all right and and what is left out here there are many menus available and the many options available we will understand them each one of them not continuously reading them but when we do some examples we will try to see why this button is used why this option is used where it is used so we'll go step by step all right so till now um, i'll just take a pass here and open up for questions do we have any open items till now i'm looking at the chat window geography yeah so ge geographical roles we just discussed that but we will talk more in one complete session it takes two sessions in fact for geographical analysis okay so i'm looking at the chat window so there are no questions i have one question all right sure 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 uh, this go. is regarding the ext extract one okay so when we are updating the extract uh, you know extract file okay so it is mm -hmm. saying that you know the uh, the uh, items in the uh, sheet will be deleted right and right. It, and it will get updated right, right. but when right. we but when, when we see the data so mm -hmm. those are not getting deleted but it is just getting updated right yes internally what happens is the, the file is not getting deleted the contents of the file will be deleted and it will be overwritten okay it just overwrites but the uh, message shows as you know it is getting deleted correct so internally it deletes the content of the file okay all right but so, the updated but uh, but the updated sheet uh, 
if can we open the content of the uh, updated sheet yes, for the absolutely. deleted ones oh. no the deleted ones no no when the data is removed so we don't have the data that is fun so, okay. so uh, I have, one have the latest of data in that file only that will be retained okay hi uh, i have one question sure uh, actually uh, when we do when we work on extraction part uh, uh, end user will be having uh, end user can see the you know dashboard what we prepare in tableau right so mm -hmm. uh, do we have to refresh being an admin we do we have to refresh the you know data every time whenever it you know added any data or deleted any data our end user has that refresh option to do that that's a very good question so when we do that so who will update the final report let's say i have delivered a file to my customer yeah. and today work fine so tomorrow i got some new entries into my database so yes. who should refresh the file to the customer so who should do that is that will be done by tableau server so how does it do automatically is we have to create a schedules in in tableau server and so for every day let's say every day 10 a.m I want to get the new data. So Tableau server will get the updated data. And because you have the updated data, now if the user opens the final report in his device, then server will send the updated information to his device. So who is refreshing here? It is done by Tableau server. And in Tableau server also, we don't need any person to do it manually because we oh. should not depend on manual. So that should be done by automation. So that automation is done by these schedules here. So we will configure date and time. So how frequently you have to get the updated data and then that report will be automatically uh, visible to the end user. Oh, oh great and here one more thing so uh, that data source uh, when i do extractions i should change the data source right i mean data source means you know excel file let's say i'm taking excel file so that mm -hmm. excel file has to be updated by me even right 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 if you are dealing with excel yes yes and in live you know uh, live data if it is dynamic you know I should I should not do anything, right? I mean, yes. being an admin. Okay, great. See, Excel, we we have to do it manually because it is a file system. You yes. have to manually add and update records. But but yes. here in live, so we we have to make use of the databases here. Okay, fine. If it is file, so now you have to do that manually. So you will have some restrictions. Um, when you connect it to Excel, can you do automatically? No, we don't. We cannot do that because no. server cannot automatically pull the file where you update it. So we will make use of the databases only. Okay, great. Uh, I have a question. Uh, sure, sure. Please, please. Yeah, please, you continue. Rajani, no issues. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Pradeep. Uh, I can see that in the Tableau data source part, uh, if you can go to the Tableau data source, there I can see live and extract connections. Mm -hmm. Okay, now here, uh, I mean, yes. when I click on the extract, I mean, extract option, I can see the edit button that I can filter out uh, some of the data into the, I mean, uh, in a table wise, right? Correct. Huh. But yes. the same option is not available in the live. I mean, uh, can't we pull the data in the live uh, with a limited uh, part of data? Can't we very do that? Good very good question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So what you ask is, 
So if I use extract mm -hmm. connection, I'm able to filter the data whatever I need. Let's say yeah. um, the region I want only, only central. So now I can get only the central related data in extract connection. But what mm -hmm. about live? Can't I get only data related to this region? Valid question. So why you can't get that? But here, observe, if you use the live connection, you have access to everything, all records, everything. But no, I won't filter that. Yes, definitely you can filter that. So that you have got uh, multiple ways of doing that. So if you have connected to a database, you can write a small SQL query, which retrieves only region. But here we connect to file system. So if it is a file system, then then we can we can make use of we can make use of this filter. Here. So there's another filter here, and here I can restrict that region. Let's say only east. So even though I'm on live, I want to restrict the data because I don't want the millions millions of records. So now if I check True. this, if I check the table, so I should get only the East related information. So where is the region here? PQR, right. So that means you can definitely restrict the data if you are using live or extract. But observe, this is the Excel file, isn't it? This is the Excel. But if I connect to database, then how do we do that? So let's connect to the database very quickly. If it is running. So this is in my local machine. And let's select any data here. So I'm selecting one small similar database. And if I drag this table, even here we have this filter, but can't we write our own SQL queries? So just write a query to get only the region-wise data. So we can write here okay. star from the table name and where region is equal to east. So you can just restrict whatever you want other than okay. the filter. So okay. we can do two ways. Right? Only then when we apply the filters, the performance of W is, is high. So only when we apply that, the performance will be high. That means if we apply the filters as we require, then the performance is very high in W. Okay. So meaning remove unwanted data. Right. Okay. okay. Thanks, Bill. Sure. Sure. All right, so any other questions? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yeah, my name is Bhavna. Uh, how far we use this uh, live and live and extract connections in real time? Which are the connections mostly used in real time? Like how oh. do we use it? And when do we get refresh uh, the data? How do we know that when we want to refresh the next type right. connection? All right, that's again the another good question. So, okay. in, in, which one do we use, live or extract? I would say you don't use live, you don't use extract. <laughs> then what do we use? We we use um, the extract only, but in a different way. So different companies uses uh, the different approach, but most of the times we will be working on the extract connections. But here, compared to extract, it is not, you will be creating your own extract files. So you don't do this. Who will do this is the W admin will do the extract and he will place this file in W server and okay. then as a tableau developer 
I will be connecting to Tableau server and I will be connecting to this extract file. So your admin is restricting you to, to have what data you need to have and how frequent that should be refreshed. So Tableau admin will take care of that. So he will not give you that option because we have some um, other uh, other consequences. If I give you the extract permission and if I ask uh, people to extract, they'll do their own extract. But I want unique in the company. So that will be done by the admin. Okay, so okay thank you. Most of the time we use extract, but this extract will be placed in Tableau server from Tableau server, we will connect it to um, Tableau desktop for that particular files. Right? So the real time is a little different approach. Um, this is a major companies which they follow. But if you work in a very small companies like level three, level four, you can connect most of the times using the live connections. So you can go for this live connection depends on project to project but most of the times we follow this approach extract options uh, what is the drawback between the i mean behind this you know when we extract when they give extract option and when they are not giving live what is the drawback the drawback what i say is let's say we have uh, three people who are working for me this is my database and the three tableau developers are working one two and three now this person logs into the company at 10 a.m and he will connect it to this and he will do the extract here so at 10 a.m he got the extract from the database and second person he is connecting to this database he is logging a little late let's say by 1 p.m and he's trying to get the extract from this database so between these two people um, there can be multiple records inserted into the database isn't it so possible records are getting updated in this database and third person is working on the evening shift maybe 6 p.m so now he connects to this database and he is pulling the extract from this file so this fellow is getting 100 records this fellow is getting 150 and this fellow is getting 175 records so some columns added some columns updated some columns deleted three people are working on the same database but with a different number of records number of columns which is not right isn't it so the output of these three people will be different so we should not have this we have to restrict in such a way that this refresh so people when they are trying to get a refresh they have to get only from one file here that means i will just remove the access of these three people connecting to the database i will redirect them to connect it to one file and this file will be talking to the database and every day at night maybe 10 p.m or 12 p.m i will get the update from the database and only the next day 10 p.m i will again talk to the database and i will get the records so that way these three people will now connect to this file and everyone will get the same number of records same data so they will be working on the same thing so that is one drawback which we see when you connect everyone to the same database and here there is another problem which is a security issue your customer doesn't give access to the database for every tableau developer so it's of the security issue so instead tableau admin will will only talk to this tab, uh, database server and store that data in the tableau server and from server connected to this file so this file will be talking to the database constantly and this will be updated so everyone anytime so they should be up to date so i can reduce the number of network connections over sorry number of database connections over the network traffic and i'm giving more security to to the customer as well 
I don't provide everyone connect to the database. And these two servers are maintained in the cloud, so it's more secure. So that's the few drawbacks we have, and that's how we can mitigate it. Okay, thank you. I got it. All right. Excellent. Oh, I cleared that image too fast. Sorry about that. So looking at the chat window, do we have W available on cloud as well? Yes. Uh, so the one of the component which we have is W online. So this is a component which is available in W cloud. So W maintains its own cloud. You just have to register with them and they will provide access to everything what you need. The number of licenses, the W server licenses, the um, different roles in W server, number of users in W servers. So everything will be provided by W. And this is the cheapest of all. So this is a very cheapest when you compare the license of W desktop. So I would say if this is 100 rupees, so this comes only for 10 or 20 rupees. So which is very cheap. Okay, so that's the question I think I answered. All right then, so we will stop it here for today. And tomorrow we will talk about these things here. So what are these things here? It shows tables in the new version, but in little old version, there's a different names for it. So the different names is something like dimension and this will be treated as a measure. So we'll, we'll talk about these two things by connecting to one old version. And what is a dimension? What is a measure? So how W identifies the column that it should place here? And what is the criteria which it places here? What is the difference between dimension and the measure? Yeah, so we have to discuss a lot about these, which we will do in, in the next two sessions. And then we will start building the reports in tablet. Oh, right. sir, I have a question. One last question. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, how can we? I mean, the data what we get it. I mean, how? I mean, can you we uh, get the questions and uh, so that we can do the practical things and all that? I mean, can we get the books for that? Um. Okay. You you will have the material for this, uh, but what you are looking there for practice purpose yes 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 okay in in the material so you should be able to see a number of questions with answers and some questions for practice as well okay that, that's there in the material and even if you don't follow sometimes in the class maybe due to some network connections you can definitely refer to the notes which will have the steps also the step by step which we drag which we drop in building the reports and whatever change we do here everything is documented but will be different examples fine uh, will that be helpful in the interview part uh, i mean what we do in the practical uh, according to the document what you will share definitely that that will be a hard copy that is not a soft copy and that document is prepared uh, keeping the interview questions in mind so every example what you see in class or what you see in the material is all based on the interview point of view and the difficulties we face in in real time so we put those questions and answers there okay and that's Fine. a hard and it is not a soft copy okay Thank you. Sure, sure. Hey, hi, uh, I have one question. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Actually, can we create new fields and calculated fields in Tableau? Absolutely. Create okay. a calculated. Okay, fine. Without this, we cannot do anything in Tableau. So this uh, is a very much needed one. Well, great. Thank you. Sure, sure. 
Okay, and one last thing before I wind up. Um, so we'll be creating a, a WhatsApp group for this batch. So every batch we do two things, the drive and the WhatsApp group for um, the current batch so that we can post any any updated information about the class, about the tableau, about the interview questions or anything. So we will place that in that group. So, um, so whoever will be part of this batch, so you have to provide your contact numbers if you want to get added to that uh, group. So anything related to Tableau and related to the batch, the information will be updated in that group. So you have to share your WhatsApp numbers. And so, so that's one small request from you. So if you give your number, then you will get the information there in WhatsApp as well. All right. So you can provide your numbers in this chat window or you can provide your numbers to the admin. So you have to call admin and you have to just ask him to add your number to that group. Uh, sure, I will do that. Uh, one last question, you know, uh, actually, do we have a server over here and where where we where you asked us to, you know, practice, you know, fetching the data from server? Do you maintain server or how it would be? Um, server is of two things. If it is a database, you can install it on your local machine. But uh, mm -hmm. when we talk about the Tableau server, yes, we do maintain the Tableau server. But uh, the problem is the license of Tableau server is only for 14 days period. So that means you have to practice uh, in, in that 14 days period only because the Tableau server license, uh, we don't get the keys. You have to purchase them. So whatever we do on Tableau server, so it is only available for 14 days trial period but you will get access in that 14 days period. You can connect it from home and I'll create a, a database server as well. So you will have Tableau server and the database server in two different machines, which you can connect from your local machine, but it will be limited to 14 days uh, trial period only. Will that be happen after, you know, after a few classes or how it would be? I mean, 14 yes. days yeah, once we are done with the majority of Tableau desktop concepts, then we will get started with Tableau server. But it is limited for four days. So whatever 14. we have to learn. Have 14. To learn. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so you can install on your local machine. If your machine configuration is high, it requires uh, 32 GB and uh, some uh, memory and eight cores is uh, minimum for Tableau server. So if you have these configurations, you can definitely install it on your PC as well. Okay. So it requires some high configuration. 32 GB RAM is required and octa core, uh, eight cores is required mandatorily. Mm -hmm. And to have 70 GB free space in your C drive, uh, yeah, the requirements are a little high, um, but we have that requirements in, in the Institute, but uh, because Tableau server is only limited for 14 days, uh, we cannot uh, go beyond 14 days. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can we get uh, the uh, license key from the Institute and? For which one, sir? Uh, tablet desktop and uh, server because uh, once yeah. we do the payment and all that I mean that would be the one year of uh, service right okay I'll, I'll tell you something um, once your 14 days trial period is about to end so maybe okay. one day two days before um, you have two things here you can register yourself as a student in Tableau website and okay. once your details are validated by Tableau, then they will send you the key, which will be valid for one year. 
Okay. If you don't want to do that because the ID cards may be a little old or or if the if the process gets rejected by you by Tableau, you can contact the institute admin and he can generate a key for you, but uh, that would be chargeable, maybe 300 to 500 between that number. Okay. All right, so okay. I prefer doing yourself, but if you cannot do it, so this is other option you have. Oh, fine, and then no problem. All right, so two ways, but try yourself, and if you cannot do that, so you have to spend some <laughs> money. So they they take it for generating the keys and they generate ID cards for you and they process it and then you get a key. So okay. okay. When, okay, I'm sorry. I'm just checking. May I ask one question? Yep. Uh, actually, when you say student ID, is that you know student uh, ID exactly student ID? Our yes. college name and everything. Yes, so it should be like college name and the year should be matching. It should be 2020 to 21. Only then the ID will be valid. Okay, any MCA student or any student? Any, anyone, anyone, any, any college, yes. AP in the world. Yeah, they have a list there. You get a drop down and you can. You can verify that if you have the college name listed there, select it. Otherwise, just say other and fill out the details. And you have to upload the snapshot of your ID. And that uh -huh. will be validated by Tableau. And it takes uh, 24 hours. Uh, within 24 hours, you will get the response. Whether it is a positive, then you get a key. If it is a negative, they say it is not valid. So they don't provide you the key. So I can use my brother's ID instead, you know. Anyone, but make sure it is the recent one. It is valid one, right? Recent, yeah. This this year. Oh, this recent. Okay, okay, fine. Thank you. Sure. This is useful. Thank you. Sure, sure. So I prefer doing myself, uh, but if I fail, then I have to look at other options. So do it by yourself. So then you learn something new. All right then, so that's all for today. Thank you very much. Talk to you tomorrow, same time, 8.30 a.m. Bye-bye. Thank you.